términos de diseño de sistemas jurídicos, opciones establecidas en la ley y decisiones judiciales, y cómo las leyes pueden facilitar u obstaculizar la aplicación de un modelo de supervisión RNR para lograr el cambio del comportamiento delictivo. En América Latina casi no empleamos RNR, no elegimos entonces racionalmente a quién encarcelar o a quién controlar más. Las sentencias que privan de libertad o que dictan mayor supervisión en libertad lo hacen a partir de la gravedad del delito, considerando la pena más alta. En consecuencia, un caso supone mayor riesgo si fue un homicidio o una violación y menos riesgo si se trata de un hurto o amenazas. Por otra parte, los planes de intervención son aprobados judicialmente en base a leyes que predeterminan legalmente cuáles son los objetivos de la intervención psicosocial. Por ejemplo, lograr que el infractor se responsabilice por el delito y que tome conciencia del daño inferido a la víctima eh, como una especie de sentimiento de arrepentimiento o compromiso de reparación. Por otra parte, la supervisión judicial de sentencias solo se limita al control de infracciones o a verificar el incumplimiento de condiciones formales, sin ninguna opción para que el tribunal refuerce periódicamente comportamientos positivos o para que sancione comportamientos negativos. En su experiencia, ¿qué barreras legales son contraproducentes con lo que sabemos que funciona para promover el cambio del comportamiento delictivo? ¿Y qué aspectos legales has podido percibir que facilitan ese objetivo y que tú consideras que otros estados o países podrían adoptar? Wow, this is a tough question. So let me be honest here. Um, I know you may think that the United States has a system of justice, but we actually are unraveling our system and are identifying it as more of a system of injustice, right? Where the poor are penalized more, where you know um, we preserve the due processes for people with means. Um, and I could go on to describe sort of, you know, the inadequacies of the current legal system. Um, but I think the question that you're asking has more to do with, you know, in, if all things were equal, what are the doctrines that we should pursue? And so I, re, I, I refer you to a 2014 National Academy of Sciences report on the consequences of mass incarceration, where Jeremy Travis, who's now with Arnold Ventures, but was then part of the Urban Institute um, and John Jay College, he basically, as part with his colleagues, put forth four ideals that should inform our sentencing and punishment system. And I really feel these ideals are what you're speaking to here in terms of how do we get to the goals that we want. So briefly, the ideals are parsimonious punishments. That means using the least restrictive punishment possible, preserving prison and incarceration for those who are dangerous to the community. And I don't mean dangerous here in terms of number of times they've been in the justice system, but I mean dangerous really in terms of people who are violent um, and who can uh, cause harm to other people. A second aspect is what's called proportional punishments. So these are punishments that are the eye for the eye, the tooth for the tooth. Really difficult to implement proportionality um, because, you know, we tend, particularly in the States, I mean, we punish people with very minor offenses very punitively because we can't get to proportionality. We can't get to grading the offenses in such a way that we recognize the difference between someone who does personal harm and people who use drugs. Um, so proportionality is a goal. And that also means that we use, you know, lesser sentences for lesser crimes. A third goal that was set out is social justice. 
So social justice basically means in for enforcing equality and equity in our society. So we're trying to make sure that we don't have a system like we currently have in the United States where the poor get punishment and the rich get off, <laughs> to be perfectly honest, um, you know, that we deal with these disparities issues. And then a fourth and final goal is what they refer to as citizenship. Um, so what they want in the citizenship goal is to recognize that people make mistakes, they do foolish things, and they need punishment, but that punishment should not undermine their dignity or their role as a productive member of society. So in the United States, we basically have a number of punishments that serve to limit people's employment. We have a number of punishments that actually uh, limit where people can live. If you are a felony drug offender in the US, you oftentimes can't go live with your family. Who are you gonna live with? What happened to your support system? All of those things undermine the citizenship. And so, you know, one of the tenets that they talked about for a legal system is to not strip people of their citizenship, but to actually extenuate, extenuate the citizenship as a way of getting buy-in to the norms of society. So I think if you were going to pursue things, thinking about those four tenets would be really important. Um, and the other thing I wanted to focus our attention on is that, you know, because of the way the system works in the United States, as I said, you know, it's a system that mistreats people of lower means and less resources. People are fragile, have more fragile backgrounds. They're often considered part of the dangerous class, but they're not really dangerous in the sense of being violent or someone that you would fear of. They're only dangerous because we have identified that we can't reconcile their you know, social economic status with the um, appropriate and parsimonious uh, interventions. So the, my guidance to you um, in thinking about these issues is to really think about the fact that, you know, we have greater goals that a civil society should be pursuing in their punishment system. And those greater goals require us to basically deal with the inequities of society, such as education and housing and employment and living wages. Um, and that, you know, we should treat people with the type of dignity that we ourselves would like to be treated with in order to help people be productive members of society. Um, so a little bit off tangent to your question, but I think it's really important, these four tenets, and I particularly like them because it makes us do things that is part of the greater good instead of thinking about how we could, you know, exalt a little bit of punishment on people. So thank you again. Mm -hmm.